one phone amongst 200 people. Now, many of you must be wondering, what's the big deal? Okay, imagine one internet dongle shared by 200 people. Now you know what it felt like to be a hostler in the 90s. We would always have a long queue in front of the phone booth. First, there used to be the love lawn Romeos, who used to always have that phone held really close to their ear, whispering sweet nothings, going from the magical to the mundane. Samaj nahi aata tha whether the phone was actually coiled around them or they were coiled around the phone. Sometimes it seemed as if the phone was a python that was trying to consume them. And of course, their conversations used to be really full of all kinds of things. Baby, have you brushed your teeth? What are you wearing? Nashte mein kya khaya? What are you listening to? And we would all patiently listen to all of this. And of course, they would occasionally change their body position into a new Baba Ramdev Asan without the health benefits. These were the long-standing ones who had almost figured out the best place to be next to the phone. The other kind of phone calls used to be the ones that people used to make to their homes. You could make these out by the distance of the phone from the ear. There used to be about one inch of space. Because mostly on the other side, there would be a really angry father who would be wondering how one person's one-month canteen bill can be more than three people's ration bill back home. Uh, you could make out the person's views by either the head that was bowed down or held back in reverence or in nonchalance. And every minute there would be a little G, ha, G. I waited for those phone calls to get over as well. Now, I had no excuse. I had to make that phone call. I had to make the call back home that I had been avoiding for the longest time. I reached out and dialed. And every sound was suddenly amplified. You know, that electric static on the other side, the moving of the dial, the ring. It was so loud, I felt that the entire hostel or perhaps the entire college could hear it. I wanted to put the phone down when suddenly there was a click on the other side. And a voice said, Beta, kaise ho? You know, only mothers understand this unspoken language when they pick up the phone at the other end and know who it is. And then, of course, she asked me the regular mummy wale questions. Uh, Khana kha rahe ho? Padhai thik se chal rahi hai? Ghar kab aoge? And then, there was silence. For about 30 seconds, and my mother said, Wo kaisi hai? Suddenly my head was filled with those images of what I had told my mother a month back about my whirlwind romance, about making my girlfriend and uh, stormy days that had given way to stormy nights, about stolen moments, about so much said and so much left unsaid. I just told my mum a month ago that I liked someone. In the 90s, my mother didn't say this the first time that you were in love with someone. My mother, after a little bit of silence, again asked, I, I turned and after a little while I, I thought of everything that had happened in that time and I turned and said, Nahi kuch ho gaya hai. Suddenly there was a sound on the other side as if the phone had got disconnected. I didn't know whether my mother had put down the phone or whether I had put it down, what had happened. I walked away from the phone in a daze and I went to my room. I didn't sleep well that night. I kept thinking, uh, maybe I shouldn't have told her. Maybe I should have gone to that uncle in the city and asked him for a solution. I got up in the morning and once again I said, I will make that phone call. I picked up the coins, I went to the phone booth. There was a long queue, but this time I used my seniority card. I moved the other people aside, went to the phone, picked it up and dialed. And the phone kept ringing. No one picked up. I cut the phone and I dialed again. Once again, the ring was loud and clear, but no one picked up. Okay. And I could hear the people in the queue getting really, really upset. It started making snide remarks. My head was filled with thoughts about, about how I had wanted to tell my mother so much about the, the fact of the time that we'd been spending together, about uh, so many unspoken things, about the fact that my girlfriend was late that month. I left the phone, I started walking back, not knowing what to do, and suddenly I heard a word. Beta, 
my mother was standing there probably in the same clothes that she had been wearing the previous night when she would have taken the Lucknow mail to come from Lucknow to Delhi and landed up at the hostel. I don't know if she walked up to me or I walked up to her, but the minute she touched my cheek with her hand, I burst out crying. The, the next couple of days just passed off in a whirlwind as my mother took charge. Uh, she fixed up a doctor's appointment, she met my girlfriend, they hugged each other and they cried. We went to the doctor and when the doctor told us it was a false alarm, they hugged again and they cried and uh, I think I hugged them and cried too. Uh, today when I look back, I find a lot of these things to just be memories that come back in flashes. There are just bits and parts of it that happen. But I look back and I think that that silence that happened when I hadn't been able to talk to my mom on the phone, in between her asking me, wo theek hai? What was that silence? Was there a silent Morse code that exists between a mother and her son, which only she can decipher? I don't know. All I know is, life doesn't come with a manual. It comes with a mother, who's always just a phone call away. To like, subscribe and follow us, just press some of these buttons. I don't know why people keep pointing. You are uh, educated and you can read. So just read it and do the needful. Please, we're a startup, we need your love.